Thanks, Mike. Hi, Brian. Uh, this past weekend was so unique for you guys because you obviously would have preferred to play the game against Maryland, but it gave you guys a chance to get a head start preparing for Indiana, and it gave you guys a chance to rest, not risk any injuries playing a game, whereas Indiana had to play a game. Just can you talk about the pros and cons of that situation for you guys? Yeah, I mean, I think the hard part is that uh, Indiana had an opportunity to play, and now they've played for four straight weeks, and so they got a little bit of rhythm going. Um, and we didn't. And, um, you know, when you, you miss out on preseason, you miss out on uh, the spring, it certainly uh, hurts when you're not playing games. We wanted to play, and, and we didn't have the opportunity to do that. So we tried to do the best we can here in-house in, in to uh, replicate games. Everything we did in practice was game rep. Um, you know, try to replicate it the best we could. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's been a challenge, but that's, that's the season and just trying to take it one day at a time. I want to ask you about Zach Harrison. I mean, he's a guy that's in the rotation. He's playing um, perhaps maybe isn't playing as, as much as some of us thought he would. Just where do things stand with Zach? Uh, what are your thoughts on him and where is he at in his development? I, I think that we're rotating guys and, um, you know, Zach's best football is ahead of him. He came in last year, I thought, um, hadn't really played a lot of defensive end and um, came in last year and did a nice job. And so uh, now he's into year two and, um, you know, he's, he's working hard. He's, um, you know, getting some good work in there uh, in practice, getting better. And I think uh, as we keep rotating and then we keep playing games more, uh, he'll just keep getting better. Thanks, Ryan. Yeah. All righty, we'll go next to Nathan Bear from Cleveland.com. Nathan. Hey, Ryan, any place in particular where you feel like the extra time off might have benefited you guys the most or the extra preparation time as well? Probably not. I mean, um, you know, you, you don't you don't typically acquire as many, you know, injuries coming out of practice than you would a game. I think that would probably be um, the only positive of that. And I guess, you know, you just limit your exposure being here as opposed to traveling. Those are the only two positives I can think of. I guess just – and also your assessment of Michael Penix. I know you guys last year had sort of prepared to face him and then he was injured and wasn't able to play. Um, but just what are you seeing from him this season? Has there been a progression from what you saw last season and, and what is allowing him to be successful? Well, I think he's, he's really playing mistake free. I mean, he's, he's making a lot of plays. He uh, keeps him uh, on schedule. Uh, he's made some, some really big time throws and tight spots. Uh, and he's fearless and, uh, you know, give him a lot of credit right now. He's, he's playing almost perfectly. And um, so that's a big challenge for us. I think he's uh, he's a very competitive uh, player. You can tell, and he's got some really good weapons around him. Um, but then for the most part, they've done a good job protecting him, and his receivers make a lot of plays. So uh, when you add that all up, that's why you have a team that's 4-0 coming in here. All right, we'll go next to Clay Hall from WSYX. Clay. Brian, does uh, the rise of Indiana point to a deeper Big Ten, or does the decline of Penn State and Michigan uh, say that's not the case? Well, I, I think, you know, Indiana deserves credit. I think Tom deserves credit the way that they're playing right now. I mean, they're just playing really, really well. And um, like I said, you know, in all three phases, um, making very few mistakes, they're, they're playing well. And, um, and I think they're, they're the ones that deserve the credit more than anything else. If you have to play in an empty stadium, would you rather play at noon than at 8 o'clock in the evening? Uh, yeah, I think so. I think, especially this time of year, just a little bit, you know, the sun's on you a little bit more and, um, and just, you know, waiting around all day is something that uh, none of us really love. Um, if it's going to be a packed house in an electric environment, that's one thing, uh, right. but it's all the same. Um, I think some of us prefer playing earlier. Thank you, sir. Yep. All righty, next up, uh, we will go to Austin Ward, Letterman Row. Austin. Ryan, you certainly, you know, seem frustrated and disappointed right. Thursday uh, with the cancellation. When you had conversations with the team, what did you sense was their mood and the way that they were responding to having that opportunity taken away from them? Yeah, they've, they've handled it really well. Um, you know, at first they were disappointed, they were angry, and then we just went to work and kept going. Um, we knew going into this that something like this may happen. We've seen it happen across the country. So we're not the only ones. And like we said, and like I said, is and nobody feels bad for us. So we've got to move on. And, um, and that's, that's what they did. And I thought they handled it well. 
I think they've handled a lot of these things well, especially when you make so many sacrifices and you do things everything you can um, to be healthy to play in a game and then you still don't have an opportunity to play. It's a hard pill to swallow, but the good news is it's behind us and, and now we're on Indiana and, uh, and that's where all the focus is. And so they, to answer your question, I think they, they handled it very maturely and they focused on their work and have a good practice. Uh, does it help at all, you think, that you know, I don't think any of us would have projected that the stakes would be this high for Indiana this week, but clearly they know what's on the line this week, and you, you can't just feel sorry for yourself or, or the East might slip away this week. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's like that every game for us. So, um, you know, whether somebody's 4-0 or 0-4, or um, you know, we, we have to win every game here. So every game's big, but, you know, when, when Indiana's playing the way they are right now, um, it's, it's, you know, certainly um, a little bit different in the fact that, you know, this is, this is a major challenge for us. You know, it's, it's a challenge every time we play a game. But, but the way that they're playing and the way that they've won games, um, you know, our March prayer gets smaller and smaller. So, uh, you know, they played last week again, and, and they, they played really, really well and, and shut out Michigan State, uh, created some turnovers, played well, and they've been playing really, really well. So uh, we got we got to be ready to go right from the get go, and then we got to be willing to play four quarters. And the whole idea is to get the game into the fourth quarter and win it in the fourth quarter. Thanks, Ryan. Yep. All right, we'll go next to Bill Landis from the Athletic. Bill. Hey, Ryan. Um, you know, if you go outside right now, it feels very much like late November, and and I think by this point in a typical typical year, you expect you would know a certain amount about your team, and even if you look at your schedule, you're technically kind of halfway through it you've only played three games and, and I'm wondering how that might make you sort of recalibrate your evaluations of where you guys are and where you hoped you might be at this point. Yeah, it, it's, it's, we could probably talk about that for, for about an hour, Bill. I mean, uh, you don't know about your team, but at the same time, we kind of, we kind of know who we are because we just seen us go through so much adversity. We've seen the way we responded to things that we see, the daily decisions and the sacrifices that have been made over time, uh, the way we, we've stuck together. Uh, we just haven't played a lot of football. And that's the, that's the crazy thing. And there's no, there's no way to replace playing in games. Um, and so we're just going to keep moving on and, and just take every day and every game as it comes and, and understand that every game is a blessing and, and try to get better. You know, I don't know what else to say other than that. I mean, I, I think we do know what kind of character we have on this team and the work ethic and the leadership and, and the type of people we have and the culture is really, really strong. So that part's great. Just haven't been on the field much. Like you said, in, in late November, we played three games. Do you find yourself ever, um, whether you're watching film or you're on the practice field and, and see maybe a mistake happen and you think to yourself like, man, that shouldn't be happening right now, then have to remind yourself, well, you know what? This guy's only played you know, a handful of snaps or – 60, 70 snaps when typically you have 200 under his belt by now. Uh, yeah, very often too, for sure. I mean, that, that really is something that is very different about the season. And yes, that, that happens. We'll go next to Mitch Stacy from the Associated Press. Mitch. Hey, Ryan. Uh, related to some uh, kind of questions earlier about Indiana, I, I think before the season, you know, we all looked at the schedule and circled uh, – Penn State and Michigan as maybe the big games. Now you're in mid-November and you've got a top 10 matchup against Indiana, a team you beat by 40 last year. I mean, it's 2020. Uh, how unpredictable was this matchup for you that the stakes would be so high? Um, I mean, I guess it depends on who you ask. I think if you asked Indiana, they, they, they're not that surprised. Um, I'm not that surprised. You know, I think they have a really good scheme on both sides of the ball. They do a good, well coach, good job coaching. They've upgraded their personnel. Um, and like you said, in, in 2020, uh, any, anything can happen. So you just don't know. Um, so I'm, I'm, not, I'm not that surprised about this at all. Um, you, you could see them getting better last year. They played really, really well. Um, you know, last year's game maybe was, um, I don't know, maybe an outlier for them um, when, you, when you look at their body of work. And uh, it was early in the season, and they kind of they kind of found their way as the season went on and got stronger. And plus, Penix didn't play, so you add all those things up, and here we are. All right, we'll go next to Dan Hope from Eleven Warriors. Dan, Ryan, I know that you know you guys had a lot of things you wanted to get better on coming off of a Rutgers game. 
How anxiety inducing is it as a coach when you've got to wait another week to see if your team actually has gotten better at those things? Yeah, it's uh, uh, it, there's there's all a lot of anxiety for sure, and it just the waiting and all that is 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 not easy, but it's it's what it is. So we got to just work through it, and the best way to handle it is get back into your work and just keep swinging away. Um, we did have a really good practice on Saturday. I felt we had a really good practice yesterday, so that's been good. The response has been good. The pads have been clicking. And, and I think that that's all really positive momentum. But, but like you said, we got to go play and put it on the field. So uh, that's the challenge. And um, we'll just keep working towards Saturday. And I know you're just focused on one week at a time, but you mentioned that, you know, you don't know where your team would be as much as in a normal year. Do you worry at all that by playing less games at some of these other conferences, that at the end of a season, your team might not be as far along where it should be? Uh, no, I mean, I worry about a lot of things for sure. Uh, that really isn't one of them. Uh, I think that, um, you know, if we're able to play our, our schedule and then play in the championship game and everything like that, then, then we'll be right where we need to be. And I think a lot of the, a lot of the schools and, and places they've gone, uh, when you look throughout the country, they've missed games. They've had people miss time. Uh, you know, it's, it's just been, it's been kind of crazy. So um, no, I, I don't think that part should factor in. I don't think it will. Thanks. Ryan. Yep. We'll go next to Bill Rabinowitz from the Columbus Dispatch. Bill. Hey, Ryan, uh, you kind of touched on this a little bit, but what impresses you the most about Indiana? How are they different than they've been in past years? Well, I, I think like, uh, first off, it's personnel. I think they've upgraded their personnel. They've done a good job recruiting and developing them. Uh, secondly, I think they have a really good scheme um, on both sides of the ball. They do a really good job on offense of uh, spreading you out and then, and then running and being physical inside. Um, on uh, on defense, they're very, very aggressive. Uh, they come at you a bunch of different ways. It's hard to figure out where they're coming from. You know, they, don't, they blitz uh, a lot and, um, you know, really don't have a lot of tendencies that way. They're just kind of, you know, uh, dialing up different blitzes and it's, um, you know, it's hard to figure out where they're coming from. So they're very, very aggressive. Uh, and then they're playing well in special teams. The returner's done a good job. Uh, and then And then coaching, they're playing with great energy. So I think uh, when you mix all that stuff together, that's what you're getting. And you're getting a team that really is playing at a high level and has made a whole bunch of mistakes. And um, so uh, I, I think that's probably, you know, again, the personnel, uh, the scheme and the coaching, uh, when you mix all that together, that's, that's you know, why you're seeing a 4-0 team playing really well. I've got a Chris Olave question. Um, when you went out to Mission Hills to see Jack Tuttle, did you know anything about Chris Olave before Chris Hauser mentioned him to you? And um, I'm sure you get a lot of, hey, look, you're here, watch this guy, but here's this teammate that's overlooked. You get that a lot? And, and you know, was that part of the equation there? Yes, uh, that happens a lot, for sure. Um, and usually if the coach is saying, I got another guy for you over here, that means you're not getting the guy that was just uh, introduced to you. So uh, it's usually not a good feeling. Uh, but in this case, it was kind of the perfect storm. He didn't play the year before. He had some really good track times. He was a multiple sport athlete. And it just kind of grew. And I kind of liked him. I liked his approach. He had a quiet confidence about him. I loved his family. And, uh, you know, for us to go all the way uh, to San Diego to get a receiver, that's, you know, we, we got to really feel strongly about him. And uh, we did. And I did. And, and um, you know, to say we, we would think that he would be the way he is right now, that's not true. We saw something in him that we really liked. We thought he'd be a really good football player. But he's exceeded his expectations here so far. And, I'm uh, really happy for him and his family. Just one quick thing. It, it, can I just speak one in? Uh, did, you, did he like run routes that day? It sounds like he just caught balls. He really didn't do much that day. Yeah, well, um, yeah, it's over time, you just you start to get more and more evaluations. You know, we had guys go out and watch him play and, and those type of things. So it was more just information gathering. Uh, but, yeah, I, I think he was out there playing catch with, with – with Jack and uh, and then it kind of grew from there. So. All right. Thanks, Ryan. All right. Next up, Doug Lamarice, Cleveland.com. Doug. Hey, Ryan. Given what uh, Wyatt Davis and Josh Myers did last year, the level they played at, I just assumed they'd come in this year and just dominate people and blow holes open every play. Are they? How are those two guys playing? I think they've been good. I mean, I think they've been solid. Um, you know, I think that uh, when you look at the first three games, um, you know, been three different styles of, of, um, 
of defense. And I think, you know, first off in protection, they've done, they've done very well. You know, Justin's uh, had a really good pocket to throw. And I think that's, that's part of the equation here too, is um, Justin's poise in the pocket is, has a lot to do with the fact that he can stand in the pocket. And so I think they've done a really good job in protection and the run game too. You know, I think when you grade them out, um, I mean, they haven't been perfect, but, but they've, um, they've been solid. They've been good. Uh, they've been practicing really, really well. So, I mean, I, yeah, I think overall they've been playing solid. And then on the other side with, with Harry as a young starter on the interior of the offensive line, I think we talked about it already. He had a couple penalties in the last game, but when a young guy like that, maybe every now and then isn't making a mistake, is it, is it technique? Is it trying to figure out who you're supposed to pick up if somebody's blitzing or if somebody's coming? When you have any sort of young interior offensive lineman who's finding his way, what are the toughest things for a young guy like that? Yeah. Well, I, I think when you're in year two, um, you, know, you kind of get thrown to the fire a little bit. You know, most guys are kind of uh, you know, into year three, like, like Nick and some of the guys. Um, this is year two for Harry. So he's learning. And that's one of the things that I think um, really makes him, uh, you know, has a chance to be a really good player is his ability to learn. And he's very, very intelligent. He learns from things that go on. You know, so many things that you see in a game um, is the first time you see it. So you can't really replicate some of the defenses that we see on game day in practice. So we, we see our defense. And that's over and over and over again. When we go against some of these other teams that play different styles, tilted noses, two gappers, things that we're not, well, then you have to learn from it. And guys like Thayer and, um, you know, Wyatt and, and, and Josh, they have a kind of a, like you say, like a Rolodex of plays in their brain and things that they can go back upon. When you're, when you're new, you don't. Um, which, again, if you, if you think about where Nick is right now, I mean, I'm really, really proud of where Nick is because he's been able to do that. But as the guard – you know, he's learning. And so uh, the big thing is he just got to make sure that he keeps learning from, from things that go on and just keep improving. And then, um, and I think, you know, he's going to have a really good career here. Thank you, Ryan. Yep. All righty, we'll go next to Kyle Rowland from the Toledo Blade. Kyle. Hey, Ryan. Sorry, this is a little bit of a repeat. Bill stole my thunder there with the Alave question. Um, the, when you went out there and he and Jack just basically threw to each other, there weren't really even bouts run that day. How, I don't know, how much do you like evaluate just a personality or just character or whatever? Was that part of why you were immediately kind of attracted to Chris? You can usually tell when people uh, talk about somebody. So whether it was the principal at the school, uh, whether it was Jack himself, Coach Hauser, you know, you start to listen to know enough people. And when you go through recruiting, maybe one person, they may really like somebody, they give them a a good recommendation. Then you go to somebody else and they kind of say the same. And then by the time you get to the third or fourth person, if they're talking very highly about somebody, you, you need to pay attention. And, and that's what happened with Chris. You know, it wasn't something really that, that we saw live at that time. It was something that piqued our interest. And then we came back and got some evaluations, watched the film, learned more about him, who he was. And in recruiting, we're not really able to evaluate all that much. So we have to really rely on people's recommendations. And uh, Coach Hauser and everybody there at Mission Hills did a great job of, you know, just giving us the information that we needed. Uh, the principal there was awesome. Uh, just so many great people that really loved Chris and uh, believed in him. And, and that's why we paid uh, such close attention to him. They watched the film and, and checked off all those boxes. Okay. Appreciate it. Yep. All right. We'll go next to Tony Gerdeman, Buckeye Scoop. Tony. Ryan, regarding Josh Proctor, we've seen him do a, a few different things this season. As a uh, game planner and play caller on, on Saturdays, are, are those types of players, those versatile defenders, how, how annoying are they to deal with? And, and would annoying be the correct term for just dealing with versatile defenders? Uh, you cut out there for a second. You're, you're asking, like, guys who can do multiple things on defense? Yeah. yeah. Is it, how annoying is that? And is, is annoying the right word? I, guess. Uh, I don't know if annoying is. I mean, it allows uh, people to do multiple things. Like, for instance, their, their Husky and nickel position allows them to do a bunch of different things. It's kind of that whole 4-2, uh, you know, five conversation where they can go play coverage man-to-man. -man. Really, if you can play man-to-man -man coverage, zone coverage, blitz, and then play the run, if you can do those things, that's pretty good. Now, at what level? That's the question. 
You know, I mean, if you can do all of them pretty good, that's okay. If you can do them all of them really good, if you can do everything great, then you're like the kid, you know, Isaiah Simmons at Clemson, you know? And so, um, yeah, it allows flexibility for sure, uh, schematically for the defense coordinator to do a lot of different things. But for you as the, as the offensive guy, what's it like dealing with, you know, on the other end, dealing with those guys? Yeah, I mean, it, it's more of, it just allows them to do more things. So you're going to have to deal with more looks. You're not going to get as much personnel-based information. Thanks. Yep. I got time for just a couple more. Uh, we will go to Rob Aller from the Columbus Dispatch. Rob. Hey, can you hear me? Got you. Hey, Ryan. Uh, off topic, I know you've spoken to this before, but and I mean this as a positive, but I think I've covered five Ohio State coaches, and you're the most NFL-like, uh, I think, of, of any of them. And I'm just curious how much – of that NFL pedigree did you bring to this job and do you still tap into it? Well, you know, I was only in the NFL for two years um, and the rest of the time it was college. So it was more of a learning experience for me. Um, you know, I've always been uh, in college other than those two years. And so uh, I, I think, you know, for the most part, it's, it's college based, but, um, but being exposed to it for two years allowed me uh, great opportunity to see what that was like to learn about the pro passing game, uh, learn about developing quarterbacks, uh, and just see what that side of it is like. And uh, it was a great experience. Um, but really, when you look at, uh, I don't know how many years I've been coaching now, but it was only really two years. So uh, mostly been college my whole life. And, uh, and so I would say I use most of the, the lessons I learned uh, in college, probably in day to day, schematically, sometimes use the things that I learned those couple years. Um, but but you know, every, everywhere you go, you learn more and you learn something new. In terms of adjustment, you go from the NFL where losing is, you know, unless you're the Patriots, uh, it, it happens a lot. And then you've got to come to college where you can't lose a game. How, how tough was that, that adjustment? That's tough. That's really tough. Yeah. Uh, it's tough everywhere you go. It's tough no matter where you go for different reasons, you know. Um, certainly that league is brutal because it, no matter what, you're, you're designed to go 8-8. Eight and, eight. and then when you go 8-8, eight eight, you know, the, the owner wants to know why you're 8-8. Eight eight. <laughs> so that would be a reason why. Well, everyone's supposed to go 8-8. Eight eight. That's the way the league's designed. Where, you know, here and other places, it's not that way. So uh, every place has its own challenges. Um, you know, we're very, very fortunate here. And, and, you know, all the different things that we're able to recruit, you know, great young men and really talented guys and, and all those things. But, but with it, like you said, comes great expectations. So, um, you know, I obviously, you know, I believe this is the best place in America, the best job in America. And, you know, we get to coach the best young men. And so, you know, it's, it's a blessing to be here every day. Time for two more. We'll go to Patrick Murphy, 247. Patrick. Ryan, you've talked about Indiana upgrading personnel and scheme and whatnot. I think the consistent there is, is Tom Allen. Um, from getting to know him, from watching him over these last few years, what has he done to improve that program? Uh, a lot. Um, I, I think it goes back to the three things I mentioned earlier. First off, the personnel. I think he's done a good job recruiting, identifying, um, you know, whether it's the people uh, or recruits from Indiana, uh, you know, whether it's going – to get some skilled players, maybe down in Florida. Um, he's done a good job. Uh, but then also they've done a good job with their personnel developing, developing, uh, you know, schematically, or excuse me, uh, you know, technique-wise, fundamentally, uh, you know, strength and conditioning. And then I think the scheme has been excellent. And then again, coaching, you know, and, and how are you able to implement those things? And so in all three of those areas, I think he's done a wonderful job. All right, we'll wrap it up with Joey Kaufman from the Columbus Dispatch. Joey. Ryan, when you first recruited or, or Justin arrived here, did you expect he would be as good as far as kind of limiting turnovers and, and throwing as few as interceptions as he's had? He's, he's thrown three in two years here. Um, yeah, I mean, certainly uh, you don't know when you get somebody. You knew uh, the talent. You saw the physical traits, but uh, you don't know about all the other things that come with it. You don't know what you're going to get until they get into the game, and that's the hardest part especially in college when um, you're not able to really work with quarterbacks. It's getting harder and harder. You know, in, in the NFL, you get to go and work them out, sit down with them, spend a day with them, 
put them through whatever drills you want to do. The scouts watch multiple, multiple games. You know, we don't do that. We get film and we're lucky to get them into camp. Maybe we'll watch them in like a spring practice. So it's, you know, it's, it's a crapshoot. And, um, and so you, you don't know until you get them. But when Justin got here, you realize right off the bat, um, he was special in a lot of areas. And um, managing the game is something I think he's just getting better and better at. Why do you think he's been so proficient in, in that particular area, just as far as turnovers? Is that just something you guys have coached into him? Is that something he just has a knack for? Because he, he has an eye for a big play and doesn't like to, to take a sack. So it, it seems like that maybe would – you'd expect maybe he would take a risk, and it doesn't seem like he throws many. Well, I think he understands, um, you know, our plan to win and how important turnovers are. And that, um, you know, if we turn the ball over, uh, we put ourselves at major risk to lose the game. And so that's the first thing. But then at the same time, you have to understand the situation. There's so many things that go into play, understanding spacing and timing and the situation in the game and when you need to take a chance, when you not need to take a chance. Do you throw or maybe only the receiver can catch it? All those things come into play. And so you can, you can talk about it to your blue in the face, but it's another thing to actually go execute it. Um, and so, you know, you got to give them credit in that area. All right, Coach, thank you very much for your time today. All right, thanks, guys.